हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम श्री कृष्णा एंड आई वेलकम यू टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जावा टॉक्स विथ श्री इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू एन ओवरव्यू अबाउट जावा कंपाइलर एंड जावा वर्चुअल मशीन इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर जावा वर्चुअल मशीन आर्किटेक्चर इन ग्रेट डिटेल्स जनरली डेवलपर्स learn java directly on some ide like eclipse netbeans or intellij idea these ide's abstracts or hides java's internal working by providing user interface to compile or to run to build to edit the source code of java applications so users do not really understand what happens behind the scene so i thought of creating this video to put light on internal working this internal workings as well so in order to understand advantages of using java let's take a look at lower level programming languages and some limitations of it in this case i am giving example of c c++ uh, programming language this c c++ compiler re reads the source code and converts it to object code or machine code after successful compilation this machine code is tightly coupled with your operating system and hardware on which it has run so what happens is code of uh, which is intended for windows will not run on linux or any other operating system with other hardware so it is an overhead to c c++ programmer to provide different os compatibility to your program they need to write different source codes in order to provide this compatibility another issue with c c++ or any other lower level language is they need to handle memory management concerns by themselves by allocating and deallocating memory so that increases probability of memory leaks and thus uh, it results into low performance of uh, your application so there was need so that you write source code once and you can you should be able to run on different operating systems without changing any uh, without changes in source code and you need not do memory management yourself these were the basic needs behind creation of java i'm going to give you compiler overview so let me just state that compiler is in resides in jdk and it is not part of jvm there is a misunderstanding that compiler is a part of jvm but it is not the case just to show you i'll quickly go to my java home path where my java is installed i'm going to bin directory and you can find java c dot exe this is my compiler so your java compiler behaves differently than your c c++ compiler it reads your java source code files and it converts into byte code which is a intermediary code it is not a machine code or object code that is a big difference this byte code or pseudo code is nothing but instruction set for your jvm that is a next module your jvm understand this byte code which are nothing but class files and it executes as per the 
uh, it has an execution engine which identifies which is current operating system it is running the code upon and it run times at, at the run time it converts into machine level code so what is responsibility of compiler it its primary responsibility is to check syntax and check type what does it mean syntax is nothing but how source code is written is it grammatically correct for example every statement should end with semicolon is a syntax and if you are missing that semicolon your compiler uh, the source code will not get compiled and it will say that semicolon is missing similarly type checking is nothing but you are assigning value of different type to variable or object of uh, other type for example i am saying integer i is equal to in double quotes shri krishna so left hand side is integer right hand side is string it is a type error so compiler will give that error and it won't uh, create dot class file for that particular class another thing about class file is your class let's say you have a class and there are different in that uh, you have a dot java file and there are different classes in that particular java file then there will be one to one dot class file associated with every single class declared in your source code i'll uh, shortly show you uh, what do i mean by this but just understand that your every class and interface defined in your dot java file will have a dot class file associated with it and these dot class files are nothing but byte code which is which will act as input to your jvm let's look at java virtual machine it is said to be heart of java because it reads these dot class files and it decides at run time what is the operating system what is the hardware underlying hardware and it converts it to machine code and executes the code so in that way it provides system independence operating system independence or platform neutrality your jvm is part of jre it is java runtime environment it is not part of jdk this is one important point you need to remember as we know dot class files are uh, instruction set to jvm and according to the instructions it will use certain memory areas at run time and it will manipulate those memory areas and do the execution of code another aspect of jvm is memory management as i have said there are memory areas in jvm which it uses and uh, there is a process called as garbage collection which happens that is a background thread that uh, works at certain period of time to collect the garbage that is clean the memory and so jvm gives this important feature to java so that uh, programmers now need not worry about memory leaks and all we'll see some command line command line commands this is a interesting topic to see and uh, these are the internals i was referring to these are some of the commands to compile your uh, java source code file to execute the java source code file and to if you want to see how bytecode looks or dot class file looks you have a command which displays bytecode of a class file so let's quickly move to source code 
I have already written a source code in order to save some time. So there are two classes in this source code file, .java file. First is student which has, it is, it is a simple class, self explanatory enough. Uh, one is string name uh, which holds name and roll number and there is a simple method display which returns nothing returns uh, which is void in return type and it prints your uh, student's name and roll number there is another class student demo which has a main method starting point which jvm calls it creates a student object and assigns value to it and it gives call to the display method so this display control will go here and it will display name and roll number that is Sri Krishna and roll number 22 so that's what this classes are intended to be and we just saw one point that your every class should be associated with a dot class file so we'll prove this point here first is java c that is i am invoking a java compiler i am giving a file name let's compile yeah. so there are no errors that's mean that means my file source code is compiled successfully it has created two files so this proves that every class inside my source code has a class file associated class file now the second command is to execute my class so I my as my main method is in student demo I'm going to say Java student demo I'm not going to give any uh, extension to it yeah so it has if you remember it has invoked this uh, created object and invoked display method of it now this is an interesting command if you want to really see how bytecode looks that is instruction set to JVM this is a command java p hyphen c and class file name dot class so let's again go to command prompt I'll say java p minus c is an argument space you need to give a class name let's say student dot class I'm hitting enter c I'm maximizing the screen this is something you need not worry about but this is how the bytecode looks it is instruction set there is a opcode it has a specific format we'll discuss about this in next video tutorial so these are the commands i was referring to initially these are very important to understand and to know now we'll take an end-to-end -end program execution overview up till now what we have seen is this part java compiler compiles your source code file your bytecode that is jvm instruction set is created those are dot class files then your java virtual machine comes into picture so this part is belonging to jre this part what it does is java virtual machine loads all the class files it interprets or just in time compiles it I'll explain these things later on but it runs the uh, bytecode uh, by converting it to machine code that is the that is the point here you want to understand so this is end-to-end -end, uh, Java program execution overflow here come uh, here I come with a, a very interesting point which we have already discussed uh, a little in this so what is JVM what is JDK and what is JRE so if you see the folder structure 
will understand it better so this is a location where I have my JDK and JRE installed my Java is installed here so my Java JDK is Java development kit it is separate from JRE when your JDK is also having JRE okay because it is integrated within you can find compiler is present in JDK it is not present in JRE if you go and check out JRE folder bin I'm going to bin I'm going to find Java C dot exe which is not present we have Java dot exe we don't have Java C dot exe that means your compiler is part of JDK that is a development tool it is not a JRE tool your Java dot exe is nothing but your JVM it there are other class libraries also which supports this you can find so many DLLs and EXEs out here in this JRE or in JDK JRE you will find the same you see in Java we will see this see. so what we understand is your JDK has some development tools like Java C because developers will only compile the source code right uh, you will not ship your source code to customer you will ship your class files in uh, by compressing them to jars you will uh, ship those files right so your clients will have a runtime environment they don't need JDK they can just have a JRE with uh, which will have your JVM that is dot Java file and the supporting uh, library files which are needed at runtime so with this I uh, we have completed uh, the topics of this video in next video you can find this topics JVM overview will uh, have a short uh, look at uh, JVM overview then JVM architecture as per Oracle's JVM specifications I have created this then what is class loader subsystem runtime data areas execution engine navigation native method interface and libraries these are the components of JVM architecture which we are going to see thanks for watching this video stay tuned with java talks with Sri. please do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you till we meet again